Hello, welcome back to Turd Towns, the channel that brings you the lesser known places in the UK. For good, but usually for bad reasons. And today it's some more of those bad reasons as we visited West Wales. And let me go on record by saying I love West Wales, I've had many a happy holiday here, but it can't be denied that there are some massive logs of turd in West Wales. So it's time that I get them off my stomach and bring them to each and every one of you. When I say West Wales, what I've done is combine the three counties of Pembrokeshire, Carmarthenshire and Ceredigion. Because to be honest, all three counties are pretty empty. But let me know in the comments where you think we should visit next. Before we get going, this was a very expensive video to make due to the insane amount of travelling around, so please do me a solid and like, share and subscribe to help Turd Towns thrive. Number 8. Carmarthen the town of Carmarthen, which often claims to be the oldest town in Wales, takes the number 8 spot with a population of 14,636. It is indeed a very historic place. Rivers, walls and castles are everywhere around here. Due to this, it's known as a bit of a touristy place, but not only that, it's supposed to have some of the best shopping in West Wales. There's a castle here, and given this tourism, you'd expect some sort of epic castle. But no, it's just two crumbling walls hidden behind some scruffy looking shops. Fortunately, it's free to visit here, as you could hardly charge someone to spend two minutes looking at a few mouldy rocks surrounded by the pollution of a dual carriageway. And the shopping? Well, whilst it is most definitely better than most of the Welsh towns, it is starting to look a bit sorry for itself. I felt an overwhelming sense of depression limping past all the closed down shops and people who had seen better days. In 2010, they spent 50 million building the new shopping centre, only for most of the shops to leave a decade later. Maybe the shops became self-aware and they didn't want to remain in a dying town so they left. But the pointless castle and the failing shops aren't the only problems in Carmarthen. It's also a town where the people are really starting to suffer. It was announced earlier this year that one in four children in Carmarthen is in poverty. Not only that, but it has a crime rate of 150 in a thousand, which is really high when you think about it. It's almost worse than every single place I've visited in Wales so far. And we're only on number eight, a sign of things to come. The M4 motorway doesn't even want anything to do with the town, with proposals to extend to Carmarthen scrapped. I guess no one can justify the waste of money of extending to such a pointless place. It's not even cheap to live here in comparison to the rest of Wales, with the average house setting you back 222000 The future does not look bright for Carmarthen. It seems to be a place stuck in the medieval times. It's no longer pleasant and now it's a town full of peasants. And the only way forward is a siege. And I don't think it's going to take much to knock that castle wall down and the locals will mostly be too high on life to fight back anyway. Number 7. Borth Okay, for our next entry we have to travel a very long way, 54 miles up the coast to find Borth, a place which sounds like the sound of a burp. This is a village with a population of 1,115. It was supposed to be nice here. It's meant to be a place for a depressing UK seaside holiday, which is becoming all too familiar on this channel. Well, it's certainly depressing, but I can't imagine many people come on holiday here anymore. There doesn't seem to be much left of the place. It's basically a long streak of piss type place. It's one straight road with a rocky beach and decaying wind-battered Victorian slum houses alongside it. The houses here really do look like they need to be condemned. And as it turns out, there's a reason for their uncared appearance. 11% of homes here are second homes, so walking through here it can feel a bit like a ghost town. 54% of people who live in Borth were born in England too so it seems like locals have no chance. Especially when the average house price is 241000 very expensive for Wales. The whole place just has an end of the world type feel to it. If you already felt down in the dumps, Borth could drive you over the edge. The rundown nature of the place just isn't helped by the lack of people living around here. Around 200 people have left since 2001. Borth is just isolated and bleak and we need to improve if it wants to continue to rely on tourism. Then there's this random street of houses which might have been something once, and randomly there's a train station. Seems like a strange choice to bring the line here to one of the most nothing places of all time. Tourists are met with immense boredom when they visit Borth and they regret their holiday. Other than the sad beach, the only thing to do is visit Borth Zoo. A zoo which has often been described as the worst in the UK on TripAdvisor for being run down and lacking in animals. It was also exposed on a BBC documentary back in the day. So Borth is rubbish to visit and it's rubbish to live in if you can afford it. If I wanted to be surrounded by obnoxious English people by the seaside in a depressing grey village, I'd just go to Sam Bay in England. It's basically the same thing, but more accessible anyway. Number 6. Amanford Not much is known about Amanford, except it's rubbish. 
It's not anywhere of any importance and it's a place with no style or substance and it feels like a place which is being left to die. It's a small town located in Carmarthenshire with a population of around 5,500. Normally in Wales you get a lot of history, but not here as it's a relatively new town. That probably explains all the boring buildings and grim existence. The only thing that ever happened here was a miners riot. It's not a place you're going to want to stay at for long as you might die of boredom. Road works everywhere here too to add to the gloomy atmosphere. The highlight of my trip was two men aggressively trying to convert me to whatever religion they were. House prices here are an average of 218,000. 80% of the population here can speak Welsh, which is pretty high for the country. You'd think a place with no history would mainly speak English. And I'm not knocking the Welsh language, I just mean it's not a very traditional place. It's a small town filled with people with a small town mentality, a huge Tesco store, a depressing high street and a complete lack of any character. Number 5. Aberystwyth I was actually in two minds to include this place, but wow, there's a fact which can't be ignored. First of all, Aberystwyth is a town located in Midway Up Wales on the west coast in the county of Ceredigion. It has a population of 14,648. Wow, what a trek it is getting here. There's honestly nothing for miles except Snowdonia, and even that's 40 minutes south of the mountains. Anyway, this is a town which is famous for a few different reasons. First of all, it is a myth that it used to be the capital of Wales. That all came from a World War II training film that wrongly listed this as the capital of Wales. Wales didn't actually have a definitive capital until the 50s. Unless you live under a rock, it's Cardiff. There's also a large university campus here, which keeps the town feeling busy throughout the day. It's also a touristy place, and as you walk out onto the promenade, just wow, it's stunning here. It's one of the nicest looking seaside towns I've ever visited. The dark sand beach looks unique and the buildings surrounding it are grand and colourful and cared for. And this old college building on the seafront is honestly one of the best I've ever seen. It feels like you're in a place of importance. And it is important to the thousands of Liverpudlian visitors who stream in every year. And they proceed to smash the town apart in drunken drugged up rages. But it goes far worse than that, the tourists aren't the only problem here. Because a crazy fact is, not only does Aberystwyth have the worst crime in the whole of West Wales, it absolutely hands down beats anywhere I've been before with an insanely high crime figure of 212 crimes per 1,000 people. The main issue with the town is it's so isolated that the police have given up and can't be bothered to make the long journey here. So instead, residents are left to fend for themselves and set up vigilante justice groups to try and tackle the criminal element here. Drug dealers and gangs operate in broad daylight with only a couple of old pensioners and their empty threats to try and stop them. It's a lawless town. The people who profit from the gangs live in the most expensive street in Wales, which is also located here. The crime rate is honestly so bad, it's just not acceptable. It's a place that was fairly normal half a decade ago. Why so much of a crime increase in West Wales? If you want to live in the stunning but crime-filled town, it'll cost you a high average price of 237000 It's one of those places that perhaps you can enjoy during the day, but at night, make sure you've got a 10-foot high electric fence around your house which is active and put bars over your windows. Because if you venture out at night here, there's a good chance you will be a victim. Number 4. Pembroke Dock Yeah, it's only one dock, not plural. Probably a good thing because the world just couldn't handle anymore. This is an industry town with a population of 9,663 in Pembrokeshire. Let's address the elephant in the room. Pembroke Dock and Pembroke are two separate towns two miles apart. Pembroke is famous whilst the dock is some sort of deformed half-cousin. Well, somehow Pembroke Dock is actually bigger than Pembroke. That's why they say bigger isn't always better. It's just a bit of a depressing place, and the only reason people ever come here is when they mix it up with Pembroke. Over the years, the dock became less important, and due to the reputation this town has, it's known throughout Wales as a dump. Residents were so embarrassed to be living here that they held two votes to change the name in the 60s and the 2000s. They couldn't agree on a new name, though. I guess they realised you can't polish a turd. The bridge will take you across the river and onto the next place, which is also a turd town, so probably avoid this part of Pembrokeshire if you can. It's an ugly 60s style bridge made out of bleak grey concrete and completely lacking in any character. It actually suits the area really well. It adds to the emotion you're feeling when you visit here. This was actually the site of the last bridge collapse disaster in the UK, which killed four people. Everybody here looks miserable like they're trapped here, and this is all they've ever known. Probably would explain their sorrowful expressions. The news doesn't get any better for the crime rate at this place, which is 151 in a thousand. I bet you didn't expect to see so many places with such high crime. 
For the record, the crime here is worse than anywhere in Cornwall, Devon, Somerset, Dorset, Gloucestershire, Hampshire and everywhere I've already been to in Wales. Everything is just so polluted and grimy here from all the nearby factories which never shut down. The other day, a puppy was found in the town which had been born with six legs and two reproductive organs. They took it to the local vet, but they were more annoyed about the cost to hand to look after the dog as they had already had a huge monthly bill for other radioactive animals. The place just isn't normal. There are two positives about the dog. Number one, the place isn't quite as ugly as I remembered it from being a kid, and it wasn't too badly smashed up either. Secondly, houses are cheap here at an average of 172000 so if you fancy moving to the radioactive town of Pembroke Dock, you can probably afford it. You will soon grow two sexual organs and then you can go f yourself. Number 3. Clelefli Clelefli is an extremely hard to pronounce town with a population of around 35,000 located in Carmarthenshire. It pains me to say the name of this place so I'll do it as little as possible. I believe that the trick with Welsh names is that a double L means roll of the tongue. The town centre felt like a mini Swansea except there was more crack. Several parts of the town centre here badly needed knocking down. People were loudly screaming and barking down an alleyway and I presume this is just part of Clefli traditions. The main landmark here seems to be a church which is on the verge of collapse and this thing is massive, I guess it gives people a place to do their illegal activities. The main area just gives you a wary feeling that something's about to happen, it's not a nice place to spend time. It seems like there's quite a lot of empty buildings in this town and it must be hard for them. On one side they've got some of the nicest countryside in the UK and on the other side they've got a much bigger place of Swansea. Clenetley is neither and is therefore worse. They moved most of the shopping out of the town centre and now this whole area is pointless. Speaking of abandoned buildings I ventured off to find the Bryn Mephis God I hate my life council estate which seems to be an abandoned estate only to find that the council there in large numbers building something or destroying something. Well that was a wasted trip. But speaking of house prices, the average house price here is 172000 which seems a little bit high considering there's literally decaying buildings all around you. I guess you're paying for the motorway access in nearby Swansea. No one really has any reason to know or care about this place until recently when it made national news as it's a town at war with migrants. Ironic considering the nickname for someone from Hlefli is Turk. Appropriately, the third place on our list has the third worst crime on today's list with a terrible rate of 161 in a thousand. It's another place whose crime rate has steadily increased since 2016 and it has now almost doubled since then. The poorest parts of Carmarthenshire are here in this town and it has a bit of a reputation around Wales. So if you're from here, you can expect comments about how bad you smell or you will be asked to supply crack. Number 2. Milford Haven Wow, I was convinced that Milford was going to be number 1, but there's a surprise. First of all, it's a Pembrokeshire town with a population of 14,249. Don't let the name of this place fool you, it's far from a haven. It's one of the most depressing places you could ever visit. Milford is known for its busy port and industry. So don't visit it then, I hear you say. Well, to be honest, you often have no choice as it's the nearest town to many of the nicest parts of Pembrokeshire. I often did when I was a kid and I've never forgotten the image of Milford Haven on a cool autumn at night. The stench of diarrhoea in the air from all the pollution the rabbit hutch houses lit up like thousands of beacons low on Duracell batteries and the overriding fear of making the mistake to look anybody in the eyes. Try to avoid Milford if you can, it's a bit like Barrow and Finesse or Blythe, but worse because it's smaller and has much less to do here. So all the people are more bored and they're all looking for a fight. And on that subject, it's another place filled with crime at 157 in a thousand. It's one of the toughest places in Wales, but it doesn't even come close to touching Aberystwyth. Milford Haven has the second worst poverty in Pembrokeshire after Pembroke Dock, which seems to be a trend with lots of former industry towns. But I just find Milford so much more depressing. Because it's so bleak here, it's also the cheapest place to buy a house in Pembrokeshire, an average of 176000 This is one place that you won't find people from England flocking to buy a second home. Gotta love all the old telephone exchange buildings sitting empty in Wales too. I decided to try and cheer myself up and walk to a different part of the town only to be met with a steep cliff and no other way up apart from the way I came along a busy road and back up the same hill. This annoyed me further. There was nothing to see or do here and at the same time you have to endure one of the ugliest towns in existence. None of the buildings here seem to match and there's also a lot of random gaps where presumably they've been tearing down buildings. Legitimately, the morons in charge tore down the buildings but then couldn't find anybody to do the work for the quote. You have to feel sorry for anyone who's stuck here. It feels like life is pointless when you spend time in Milford Haven. They probably wake up feeling the same way every day. They're still finding it hard to believe that they're in Haven. 
Number one, Haverford West. Well, this place was a real shock to the system. But yes, this is the worst place in Western Wales. Haverford West is a town with a population of 12,000. It's also the county town of Pembrokeshire. But this isn't like any county town I've ever seen. The town has seemingly given up and lost any importance it might have once had. First of all, the name is just ridiculous. Apparently it was originally called Haverford, but West was added to the end of it because people kept mixing it up with Hereford, a place three hours away. You have got to be pretty stupid. Actually, it's probably a good thing. Imagine if you came here by mistake, you'd be horrified. Smashed up buildings and homeless people all over this town. It's just a miserable place. I'd only been filming for 20 seconds when one scumbag individual screamed at me to put my camera down. It does have a castle, but it's another one of those castles that barely exist, apart from a couple of crumbling walls. Horrified locals have recently complained about all the dog feces and syringes that are lying around the castle walls, which is ironic. A place which dungeons used to keep people trapped in, and now used as a place to escape life. The shopping here is appalling, which is a shame because it certainly feels like this was once a bit grander than the other places on today's list. And that's backed up by the fact it was recently ranked the 8th worst high street in the whole of the UK. The majority of the boarded up buildings are owned by one single millionaire. He claimed he's been unable to do anything with the buildings because drug addicts keep smashing them up. It is admittedly better down by the waterside, but by the time you've seen that you've already formed your opinion and you hate this place. Haverford West has an awful crime rate of 190 in a thousand. Its crime has pretty much doubled since 2016 and gotten worse every year. And just because its crime rate comes second to Aberystwyth, it doesn't make it any better. It's still appalling. On paper, it should be nice here. It's in one of the nicest counties in the UK. It has a river running right through it, a castle in the centre and plenty of ancient buildings. In other parts of the UK, this would be seen as a tourist destination, which is why it's laughable how bad Haverford West had failed. Most kids can't wait to get out of this hellhole and never come back. There's also a lack of work here on top of that, so who can blame them? Because it's so bad here, you can find some of the cheapest houses in Pembrokeshire for an average of 198,000. I'd give it a miss though, it's hard to find anything positive to say about the town. It's a surprisingly bad place, half of it needs condemning, cleaning, fumigating and its status as a county town needs removing. So that's another episode in the bog. Very interesting, I wasn't expecting Haverford West to be the worst place I visited. Not much of Wales left to visit now. This was a pretty fun episode for me to make. I'm telling you, my next filming trip wasn't as much fun and I pretty much hated it. Wales can have as much crime as it wants. I was still so much happier here than places on my next trip. Please drop a comment, hit like, share and subscribe to fun future trips and help the channel thrive.